Hey, everybody. If you want the full uncensored episode, be sure to click the link below to join the Fight Club on Patreon. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. I had to get in tight on you first, and then let me pick my way through the fight and fight the way I want to, because I know I could go long. But, man, I remember the night we fought, and uh, one of the nights we fought, I don't know how many times we fought, but six, seven, I don't know. But I remember we're going pretty good, and I switched, and I threw a couple lefts, and we both lost our helmets. And at the end of the fight, we got twisted around, and you were behind me. And we both went down. I remember I went down. I hit my fucking head on the ice. I didn't know where the fuck I was. Tweety Bird, you were on my back. I, you can see it on the thing. You're like climbing on me. I think you're still trying to fucking get me. But I was fucking gone. And I remember <laughs> getting up and I'm going to the penalty box. I'm going, holy fuck. It was like, a, it was all a blur after that. That'll be a suspension. That'll be a fine. Nyland going ballistic. He's a freaking madman. I'm Chris Nyland, and this is the Raw Knuckles Podcast. Welcome, uh, Brian Curran, the colonel, to the Raw Knuckles Podcast. Say hi to my partner, Tim. Hey, Tim. How are you? How you doing? Thanks for coming on. Oh, yeah. my pleasure. Yeah, this is, I, I got to tell you, this... Um, I, I've done this quite a bit, Brian Curran, the Colonel. Uh, I've had Jay on, Terry on, a lot of guys that I fought with over the years. I never thought I would have you on, and um, not not because I didn't want to have you on. I'm mean, how the hell can I reach out to him? How can I get in touch with him? I did a little research. And I said I'm going to surprise him and call him, and. Um, I did, and you quickly said, yes, you do it, and I, I appreciate that. But when I think of the the dislike you and I had for one another <laughs> back in the day, uh, it's incredible that you're here today. So welcome. Well, welcome, I, you I, prick. <laughs> well, you're kind of an asshole, too. So I know. We both were, but I got to tell you, when I sat there and uh, – when I saw that, uh, the email first of all, I was like, yeah. I looked at my wife and I said, holy shit, Chris and I hate each other's guts when we played back in the day. I think we wanted to tear each other's head off wherever we went, whether uh, yeah. it was on the street or whether it was in the, on the rink. Oh. Um, so when I, you know what, it's like, it's so funny though. The years go by yeah. and what I felt for you or as you probably felt for me, they just go away. Like, it's right. like, okay, we did our shit back in the day. And right. we didn't like each other. Like, yeah. I would have to rank Bob Probert and myself who probably disliked each other the most. So you didn't get number one billing. Yeah, well, I was right there anyway. <laughs> you, you were right, right. there. So. <laughs> and you were too. I, I got to tell you, you were right there too for me. And I say that because, listen, you're with the Bees, I'm with the Habs. One of the greatest rivalries of that era, certainly, in hockey. Um, now it's like, you know, they might as well play on the computers the way it is. Um, um, it, it, it's crazy. It's nothing like it used to be. But And, and we'll get into that in a minute. But um, just for a minute, put yourself in my shoes. At the time I'm in Montreal as a rookie, I came in, and we were going to Boston. Hello, O'Reilly, Jonathan, Winsink, Cashman, Al Secord. Like, hey, take your fucking pick. Now, I'm not going to say they weren't. Listen, I was really the only, say, enforcer or a fighter on the team at that time. I had guys that would stick in for me and be there for me, no question. And even in the latter years, guys like Chelios would always be there. John Corder came along eventually. But fuck, going into that building, and, and no wonder why every team had a tight ass when they went in that building. The Bruins always fucking had tough teams, and you had to be a fucking Bruin. You had to play like a Bruin. Tell me your definition. What is a Bruin? You know how they say, be a Bruin, play like a Bruin. What's a fucking My, Bruin? <laughs> you know what? To, to be a Bruin fits that short T. I mean, I was lucky enough I had uh, Terry as my roommate for a while. 
Yeah. So you get cash. You listen to Wayne Cashman's stories. That can go on. You know, <laughs> an unbelievable person. Him and I have had a few cocktails together and talked about the past and even the times you were just mentioning. See, that wasn't yeah. you were back in that era where, quite honestly, that's a lot of effing tough guys. Like, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. I yeah. was in your shoes, and I would have had to do what I would have had to do. Yeah. But I wasn't too afraid of that. But to be a Bruin, to me, was toughness. Like, toughness everywhere. Like, yeah. I wasn't any skilled guy. We can get in, and I skated like a wounded water buffalo. Um, <laughs> a friggin', but I, but I never questioned my friggin', was no. I a Bruin? I never questioned that because I knew I had the character and the balls and the heart desire to do whatever it took to be a player. And I think any guy that played in our role, um, I maybe wanted more. I don't compare myself to some of the guys that were much better players and fighters than me, but I did my role and I was proud of the role I did. But to be a Bruin was like everything. I mean, it was very hard for me to leave there. I will yeah. have to say it was. I but would I, imagine. I, I, huh? Oh, yeah. I would it imagine. Was yeah, when you just you get locked into that room and you into that, it, when times have changed so much. But back then, like sitting with Brad Park and all these guys and listening to the stories, and you get excited about you going into games in the Boston Garden. Like I, I don't think you were wrong on that, Chris. When you talk about like I remember people coming in there and they'd shit themselves. Yeah, like yeah, <laughs> you could. And for a guy like me, like. I knew that there were guys that were just scared shitless. Yeah, yeah. And you could. I took advantage of them. I well, mean, I, could, I lived my one super- You could see ahead. that in, you could certainly see that on the teams that you played with because, yeah. you know, not everybody, but guys, you could tell they were nervous. They were scared. And listen, before every game, I was nervous. I had that fear. I had the fear of losing a fight, not so much getting in one, but losing. I didn't want to lose. And, you know, that's difficult. There's no question about it. I think all guys have different feelings about that when it comes to the fight game. But you grow up in in Toronto. Well, no, you were born in Toronto, but you moved out west. How does that happen, Brian? Uh, How do you move out west? It's not a long story. Yeah, but both my parents were born in, I'll get the short version, because as my father used to say to me, Chris, I could talk a starving dog off a meat truck. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to give you the short version on this one. And then he said, uh, so my parents were were both from Dublin, Ireland, and he was in the cow business. So he worked for, uh, when we got transferred, I was only there nine months in Toronto, and then we went out west to Canadian Packers and Lethbridge. And we ended up, my dad in the cattle business, we ended up owning four different auction markets, ran quite a bit of cattle, lived on the farm. Um, it was the life we lived. So yeah. that brought us to Alberta, and that's the short answer. And that is the okay. shortest one I can yeah. Are you ready to take your love for hockey to the next level? Join the Fight Club Raw Knuckles exclusive Patreon to unlock amazing perks like ad-free episodes, bonus interviews, and even a chance to win a game day experience with me, in the Habs cave. Don't miss out on this ultimate hockey experience. So, so both parents from Ireland, um, which I never knew, and I think that's really cool. I knew you had an yeah, Irish name, I but I didn't know just how Irish you were uh, and are. Um, what, um, you go to Alberta, you grow up on the farm. How do you get into the... Uh, ice hockey did you, you have a rink out in the back 40 or did no. uh, i mean that's what everybody does in canada but how'd you get how'd you get involved in hockey well here's one that might just make kid. you laugh right <laughs> so actually hockey was never something i just did it because everybody else did right and my yep. dad used to drive me in from the farm into red deer alberta and that's where i played all my you know, years of hockey well 14 years of hockey but no one knew this, and this is where I'm going to laugh when I see Chris's face here. I wanted to be a pro tennis player. That's what I wanted. <laughs> wow. Okay. So I played, I played tennis all over. I played in the National Championships and played all through Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. Really? I, wow. Yeah. And how it happened was, is one tournament, when I won a match in the semifinals, I took all my rackets, and I smashed every single one of them over. Yeah, after I won. 
because the guy cheated so bad. My old man looked at me and he just said, after this uh, finals, you ain't fucking playing tennis anymore. You're done, grow up. So I just figured, you know, what sport could I go into? And how old were you then? Yeah. I was 14. Wow. 14 years old. Played since I was like four years old. Wow. Tennis. I never so started had hockey. you been playing hockey too also? No. No? Not until I was nine or 10 years old. Okay. And then I just thought, you know, what sport can you get into where you can, when you get frustrated, you can just beat the shit out of somebody <laughs> and that's all done with. So hence hockey became something you didn't get arrested for. Um, I will say that, uh, you know, like it was like 14 or it was 15 years old, I think, my old man. I was playing in a game. You remember back in the day, you could get away with anything. Well, yeah. I cross-checked I cross -checked a young guy in the face. And I, I didn't mean to cross check him in the face. It just came up there. I was mad though. Yeah. And that, so I got the penalty and then I get back home and my old man, you gotta know him, he's quick tempered, uh, he's my idol. Um, so we know where that comes from. Boy, he's, tough, he's a tough <laughs> son of a bitch. Holy shit, he was. But, and he said, uh, so what did the coach say to you after the game? He says, don't do it again. He says, well, you're suspended. And I go, suspend it from who? I'm not from the team. My old man goes, from me. <laughs> you don't ever fucking touch another person in the face with that stick. Ever. You ever do it again, hockey's done and over with. So, oh, wow. I mean, I slash, correct, cross check, guys. You know. You, know, you were good at it. <laughs> Why didn't you listen to your father? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> were you always Stop. like, were you 6'5 and big then? Like from No, oh, like when I was 14 years old, I was 5'7. What? Jesus, what, uh, what the hell? Success. What happened to us, Knox? We didn't get uh, any Well, here's what <laughs> happened. Then I ended up growing seven inches in four months. Wow. Yeah, so I ended up, uh, well, I was in the hospital for a couple of days because the pain was really bad from the, both the joints and everything, but I couldn't walk Oh, from, the, growing, the growing pains, wow. yeah, yeah. Oh, it yeah. Was, my coordination was gone. So I ended up playing, like, you know, double-A hockey. Yeah. And... Then I just fell in love with the game. Like it just became, I knew my weaknesses and oh God, when I played major junior, I thought it was gonna be a goal scorer. Well, that went downhill, two goals in major junior. So <laughs> I kind of figured out what my role was. Uh, but the old man, you know, the old man just made a real simple rule. Uh, uh, he said, you, did, you didn't do it in tennis. He said, you showed your temper and you, and, and you quit in one match. And he said, if I ever see you do that again, you're done. Sports so, are over for you. So, you know, you grew up playing in Alberta, but then you end up, did you get drafted or did you get a tryout uh, in Major Junior? What happened there? Uh, yeah, you know, I don't know how it happened over there, but over here, they just, a scout comes up, uh, Wayne Myers, who ended yeah. up, great scout for Portland, and then he ended up in, uh, I did some NHL scouting for quite a few years, but Wayne had come up to me and said, you know, we want you to go to camp. So here I am with guys you'll kind of know, like, I go to there when I... In Portland, court. Tim, you don't know, but Portland always had fucking tough teams out west. In, in, in well, the I west was there with, uh, Oh, yeah, but you'll know these guys because yeah. you played against them. I yeah. was with... Uh, so I go to Fort, Fort Saskatchewan when I go to their cap, and there you got uh, uh, Perry, uh, Perry Turnbull, yeah. Keith Brown, Wayne yeah. Babbage, David yeah. Babbage, yeah. Blake Wesley, and it goes yeah. on and on, and these guys are, like, enormous to me. Yeah. And, and that's kind of how it started. And then, uh, well, I, everyone kind of knows this. So I, then I ended up going my first year to Portland, young. Yeah. And uh, my how coach. Old, how old were you that first year? 16. 16. So, Jesus. So yeah, you move away so from I, home at 16. Yeah. Well, I went to Notre Dame, boarding yeah. school. Notre yeah. Saskatchewan probably played with the best team that ever played at Notre Dame. Like uh, James Patrick Gord, Kluzak, Gary yeah. Lehman, Lyndon yeah. Myers. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, and on and on, right? You played on that. You played on that team. At yeah, it was, we lost wow. two games. I. Yeah. yeah, that was a hell of a team. Well, we we had a lot of fun, but Notre Dame was probably the back in that day was the school that changed my life forever. I was I was following too much. Yeah, and I. My old man was like, you're a leader, not a follower. Notre Dame changed me. So then I just kind of grew from that point. But Portland, 
Ken Hodge, after my first year, goes, you're the biggest fucking disaster in Portland Winter Hawk history your first year. Ken Hodge? Was he coaching Hodge, there? My favorite, oh, yeah, he was my favorite coach. Really? Hodge was coaching there? I don't actually I know, didn't know if I that. want that. I don't think I want that on it, but Hodge was my favorite coach of all times. He knew me yeah. better than anyone, right? We had a great wow. relationship. And there's many stories about me and Hodge, but... He was absolutely right. I mean, I did everything you could do wrong as a first-year major junior player in Portland. I partied like a rock star. <laughs> I looked uh -huh. like Howdy Doody. I don't know why any <laughs> women were with me at the time, but it was crazy. Um, and lied like I lied to everybody about everything. <laughs> Every Wednesday and Saturday, I was just bombed. Uh, <laughs> then the fine, then the next year, I did uh, 180 from the right hand of God, which would be my dad. <laughs> He laid the rules down, and everything I did that year, I did a 180, and I did that for the rest of my life for, for the most part of it. It was, uh, but Haji was my favorite coach of all time. Wow. Yeah, so I was kind of a fuck up. So, yeah, but so you, you go to junior, and, and that first year, when, when does the fighting start? Now, were you told to do it? Was it, the you just get in one and then, okay, I got to do this now because I beat someone? Or what, what was the deal with that? Here's the real simple answer to it. You'll understand this. I have five sisters, Chris. Oh, geez. Oh, yeah. wow. All right, so. You're the only have, boy. You're any brothers? Only boy. So there have okay. been a couple altercations in my time with their boyfriends. Yeah. Well, so I've always had a protective nature. And I was a very much like an eye for an eye type person. Yeah. Like if you're going to abuse our guys, I'm yeah. going to abuse you. Yeah. And if you go back, so when it happened in Portland, like one of the funniest ones to me is Dave Brown and I. Brownie and I have known each other since we were 16 years old. I love old, Brownie. Right? I love that and guy. He's, he is such a good guy. Like yeah, he really right? is. I'm not saying we're best buddies or anything by any means. Yeah. We fought each other probably... 15 times more for more yeah in junior uh, but we had a great one in the Brownie and i had the epic fight in western hockey league so i remember i'm skating to the bench and brownie if you're listening you cannot deny this but <laughs> so i was a tough guy brownie was the tough guy and he is tough yeah so i'm going to the bench to change and brownie grabs me and just pump like i'm almost in the bench and he just grabs me and pummels me right so we go into the penalty box and I look over at him and I said, leave your fucking gloves in the box. And then we walked yeah. him out of the box. Brownie did. And we went at it. I'm not kidding you. I'm not exaggerating. I would say it was a good two minutes of raw anger. Yeah. Like he knocked me down a couple of times. I knocked him a couple of times. I tried to throw him in his bench. They threw him back out. No, then throw him back out. He didn't go in. <laughs> I tried to. Then we threw more. We couldn't even lift our arms. At and from end. funny point, from that point on, through our whole NHL career, if you ask Brownie, we'd sit at the red line, and Brownie would look at me, or I'd look at Brownie, didn't matter, and go, he'd like, Colonel, not feeling it tonight. Mm -hmm. You want to go for a shift? <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. And he fought me square up, and we had some really good ones, but he had that long-ass reach like Bob Prober did. Like, he had me by about an inch, but... Uh, Brownie and I were, we, we, you know, I respected all the tough guys. Of course. I, I genuinely did. Like, 99% gen of them. I, hey, I, they're, they're good guys. As much as I didn't like you, I respected you for what you did. There's Same no here. question. I, I was all those guys. I mean, I, I didn't like all the guys I fought, right? But I had that healthy respect for all of them because I know how difficult the job is. Um, so that junior... Uh, career of yours in Portland. Now, I, I, I got to ask you about your dad because, you know, you mentioned your dad about the temper thing in tennis. Your, your tennis is over. What do you think What do you think about the fighting in hockey? Was, it, was he okay with it? Or was oh, he like, what he, the fuck are you doing? No, he's the one who gave me my greatest fighting tip. He said, uh, remember this always, he goes. When you know you're going to get in it, you'll know by the eyes. Yeah. That's number one. Number two, when a player is talking, he said, fucking hit him, because you can't talk and punch at the same time. It's impossible. <laughs> and number three, if he doesn't go down, pray to God you can make it through the rest of the fight. Yeah. Like, that was it. Yeah. Like, he was like, my mother was the one that was funny. 
No, yeah. of course, I couldn't see it. But my mother, when she would come to games, she would start shadow boxing. Yeah. My dad, she, As you were fighting? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, she'd be like, she, she was actually, honestly, Chris, she was, uh, I was going to quit after nine years. I had enough. Yeah. <laughs> Had enough of, of your uh, pro, of of your pro career or minor career? Uh, just no, just uh, enough of hockey f because it was this I, in, my, in your pro career or was it in before in, in pro your pro? Career. All right, Look, okay. Back uh, like after nine years of pro, I sat there and, and it's my mother that got me the next what is it uh, eight years. Um, we had a long talk, and my mother. Um, saw that I wasn't having fun and so she asked me one day and I, I just looked at her and I said you know I know what my role is you can call me whatever you want you call me a goon you enforce or whatever I don't give a shit because I'm living my dream yeah. and you can call me whatever you want I'm living my dream so you know whatever um, so anyway she basically said you gotta get your smirk back you gotta start laughing again you gotta start chirping again and you gotta get back to all of it give it a few months and get and it was a lot longer than that and because of her, I got that edge back again, and I felt like being that guy. But I was pissed at her. I was pissed at some of the teams I played with because I felt like I was alone, and yeah. I didn't. I didn't need anybody. I knew my job, but I made it. And I'm not going to bring up the team, but I made it very evident with one team because I walked out on him right after a game. Yeah, I said I'm done. You guys are, you know, I named some players, and they said because you, you were you the only fighter on that team at the time. They didn't give you any help. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had that then, Montreal for a bit, but quarter came. And honestly, I didn't mind it. I hated being challenged for my job. I was like, fucking, let, let me, I, I can do this. I can handle it. I don't need help. I'll be good with, you know, you. I had teammates that would jump in and help me. I didn't need anybody to, like, go fight Brian for me or go fight Jay for me. Although when quarter came, he did take some of the burden off me, but I didn't really need it. No, but for me, I didn't. It's not that I needed it. I needed them to be. When I think of team concepts, and that's kind of how I am, right? It, it's like I know what my role is. I have no problem doing my role, and I don't need. I don't need to get up for it. And so you were saying there wasn't one fight that I wasn't nervous, or one game I wasn't nervous for, and I knew that. But when I know there's other tough guys on the team, and they're not heavyweights, yeah. But stand up for each other. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't want to have to... I came to your rescue 30, 40 times, whatever the hell it was. Packed you up. And sometimes it wasn't a fight. But be accountable, too. Because every once in a while, I'm not boo-hooing and feeling sorry for myself. No. But fuck, but you no, got a I six hear foot, you. Yeah, but you got a six-foot-five defenseman who thinks he's a friggin' all-star defenseman. Yeah. And you're not. But you're tough. But you don't... Oh, I'm a scorer now. Like, that yeah. pisses me off. So I let yeah. them know... That's how yeah. I felt about it. And then my, my quitting the team lasted about 12 hours. Get into the action with Fight Club, Raw Knuckles' new exclusive Patreon. From ad-free episodes to uncensored content and discounts on merch, there's something for every hockey fan. Join the Fight Club today. You get drafted the first round, and I remember when you come to Boston, I, I was like, okay, so... That whole crowd, O'Reilly, John Sequel, everybody, Jay, fucking Kluzak, like, hello. And then you come along. And certainly, I remember, do you remember the um, the night, and I remember it well, where I fight Jay once, and then I'm going to, the first time I'm going to fight him, he's <laughs> at the face-off. Uh, who was, I had hit Middleton. I yeah. gave him a rap in the chops, and deserve, deservedly so, they're all going to fucking come after me, Tim. Like, they're coming oh, after yeah, me. They, yeah. they, it, it is the whole fucking city wants me, not just <laughs> the players. The whole city wants to kill me. So I know what's coming, but I get there, and uh, I get put on the ice, and I forget who was out there, but they took him off, and they put Jay out. And Jay had just got called up. Were you there before yeah. Jay or after Jay? You both came the same Jay. time. No, Jay came after me. He came out. You were there already. So I already yeah. fought him. And I'm there. Fuck, they got enough guys here. Kluzak, Cameron, O'Reilly. You got all these fucking guys. Now we need another one. So all of a sudden, I'm out in the face off. Jay comes out, and I know what the fuck he's there for. So I'm waiting, and I go, 
And Jake comes out and he lines up and he looks at me. I look at him and I said, hey, I know what the fuck you're here for. We're going right away. And fucking just before the puck drops, I fucking drop my gloves and I grab him. I didn't throw a punch right away. He turned around and then I started to throw and fucking the colonel comes charging in and I see him out of the corner of my eye and I threw the punch and it went over his shoulder and I think I just caught you in the chin and then you fucking hit me with one and then all hell broke loose. Chelly jumped on you. But That's right. I'm there, holy fuck. Like if it wasn't enough with all the other guys, then I had to deal with Jay now and I'm like, Jesus. Like people don't have a clue. You know, they love seeing that part of the game. But they don't know. They don't have a clue of the feeling, oh. or what that's like to come into Boston, and fucking there's five guys on the other team that you or six that you could potentially have to fight that night. It's it's unsettling what? to say the least. Yeah, but it, and you know it was like the same feeling. Like so, I remember after with Nifty, yeah, met Rick Middleton, yeah, and I remember I got like the press you know what are you going to make the you know you're going to make this uh you're going to square this up and yeah say, you're going to get an island fuck i'm going to yeah. get so come on motherfucker <laughs> oh yeah it was all of that and more <laughs> yeah. so now it's a build-up because i'm not sure when we played in montreal whether it was a week or a couple weeks later but it was built up pretty good that you and i were going to go you yeah. know kind of thing and one of the guys asked me, like, you know, you're going to go in the first. I said, I'm not I'm going to tell you when I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah. That's just my thing. So You could be a whatever. friend of Chris's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but here's what you didn't know. So the night before we played you in Montreal, I get a, uh, I get a uh, phone call in my hotel room. And I get a death threat. That if I show up at that game I'm going to be killed the the FBI got the FBI got involved on it and then my coaches were like do you want to play I'm like of course (laughs) like (laughs) that had nothing to do with me by the way even though I have even though I have family ties um. I actually didn't think about it but now that you said it I wonder did you put it (laughs) so so that was one of the incidents that happened but wow I didn't know that even going to Montreal, it was like, and Chris knows it, uh, and, and all of us that did what we did, well, I can't speak for everyone, but most of the guys I knew, we always were like, okay, you don't want to lose. Yeah. <laughs> you want to, but you're, you get your adrenaline, the nerves, and everything gets going. And people always often say, it was like I had some people, fans ask me, is that like, like that wrestling shit that it's fake? Yeah, And yeah, I said, yeah. I'll tell you what. I did say uh-huh. this about you one time. I said, why don't you stand there with Nyland or Prober one time and just tell me how you feel when their punches hit you. Right. Because, yeah. you know, and, and one of the things, like even with Chris, like when I fought Chris, see, Chris could last a lot longer in a fight. You, you knew that, and you knew you had to tie my right up. That yeah. was that was it. Yeah. I wasn't a left, right? He knew that about me, right? Yeah. So for me, I had to get him in the first 20, 25 seconds because if he went longer, he was going to outlast me for sure in the fight. No question. It's like funny I know, you know that. that. <laughs> yeah, I knew that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to get right from the beginning, right? But you know, that's like when people say, "Did you enjoy it?" Yeah. Well, I didn't fucking hate it. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't Obviously, either. I had enough of them. It, it was part of my DNA. Yeah, and it, the DNA was I was protective, and then I love getting then I love getting beat up. I got like Larry Playfair one time. I made by the way USA today USA quote today, not Jimmy Larry. Larry, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Larry. I know the difference. <laughs> it's the first fight that I ever got sent out in my entire career to fight. Well, I wasn't into the game. I was pissed off, so I throw two quick punches at Larry. Okay giving you the end of the story now I gotta go in and get work done alright so I go to our trainer after they fix me up alright I'm ready to go he says Brian the game was over 20 minutes ago <laughs> so that's how hard he hit me like, I didn't even freaking so then a USA guy comes to me and he says well that's a tough fight you can always ask Larry this Larry's wife even felt bad for me she came up to me. he goes uh, did you know him before goes, did you know him? No, I didn't. From, I played no, with his okay. brother. His they brother. Know. They're unbelievable yeah. people. Larry yeah, they're great but people. I, yeah. So uh, 
the USA guy goes, uh, you know, kind of a beating, and I go, he said, how are you feeling? I said, well, I got hit in Boston, and I'm somewhere the fuck over Chicago right now. I haven't landed. <laughs> so that, that got in with the bleep bleats and the quotes, right? But it was kind of getting back on the saddle again. He just got killed. Yeah. And I fought Larry three or four more times after that, but Larry had my number. There, there was yeah. I was he, he just didn't. I just had to get back because I couldn't have fear, and it was the scariest fight I ever had in my life. After he beat me so bad, to yeah. go back and do it again, and people yeah, that's, never, they're feeling people don't have a fucking clue about that. What that's like when you get your fucking hat handed to you, and then you go out there again. And, and, and you're not going to fight that guy again? Who's going to see that? Everybody in the stands, all your teammates, and most Jesus of all, Christ you. And oh. you're battling with yourself okay. that you got to fucking walk through the fear of, I got my fucking ass kicked. I got to fight this guy again. I don't give a shit. I got to fight him again. And that's not a, <laughs> that's a very uneasy feeling. Um, oh, it was. I, I can remember. I was... It's even like you go back and it's funny because I had a guy that was, he was going to write a book about all the fights and all the guys yeah. I fought about. This was years ago, right? Yeah. And it just brought back memories. Like my first fight was going to be, uh, well, my first ever fight was Paul Homer. Yeah, Homer. And so Homer and uh, I'm in front of the net, first year player, and I'm cross-checking the shit out of this guy, six foot three or whatever Back is, when you right? could do it. Like nine oh, times I was, before you got a penalty. Like, I was like 19 years old, right? And all of a sudden we're in Philadelphia and uh, it just makes me laugh because I finally realized when he turns around who, who it is. It's freaking Paul Holmgren. I'm like, holy shit. And I'm like, almost want to say sorry to him, but I'm like a tough guy, right? So he's like, he drops his gloves and we go at it and I do really well. And then... I, he's the linesman get in Scappy gets in right and he's like uh, you hear Homer go let the fucking rookie go I'm not done <laughs> so I'm like no no keep him <laughs> seriously yeah. I said it listen to the ref <laughs> that's, 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 I swear to God <laughs> and then he drops uh, gloves and this is why I always had so much respect for Paul Holmgren too, right? So I do really well in the second go around and the same thing, right? And as we're going to the penalty box, he whacks me on the ass and he goes, good job, rookie. That was my first one. And that was kind of like, that guy's really cool. Yeah. Like I did really well against him and he's still saying good job. And I was yeah. like, you just beat the shit up. Like Chris and I were never no, gonna say that. No, way to go, <laughs> Brian. Way to go, <laughs> Colonel. Fucking fuck you. We were like, shit, come out. It was like, oh. I remember we fought at the forum, and um, you're right, because I could go on. I have Mac, I have very good Max VO2. You know, Ray Bork has it. A lot, I was always one or two on the team. Now, I just was really good second half fighter. But. Yeah. Fighting bigger guys, like I'm just about six feet, just five, eleven, and three quarters. And I said, if I, and I remember when I fought O'Reilly, I fought Jonathan, then I fought Terry, and he fucking, I threw two rights real quick, and then boom, boom, he hit me with two lefts. The blood just poured out of my head. I think it was before, it was just before you got there. Yeah. And because it was my first year, and I went to the penalty box, and I loved O'Reilly growing up, right? I loved this fucking guy. My my pride is fucking wounded. I was I was a wounded animal. The I, I'm still blurry eyed and a little fucking dizzy, and he's over there. And I I look over toward him and I'm wiping my nose. And he goes, and he points to his left, Taz. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> so I said to myself that night in the box, I said, I can never let that happen again. I won't last if I fucking get beat up like that every night. I got to stop fighting smart. So yeah. that's when I started really knowing and getting in tight on bigger guys, like you're 6'5", right? I had to get in tight on you first and then let me pick my way through the fight and fight the way I want to because I know I could go long. But, mm -hmm. man, I remember the night we fought and uh, one of the nights we fought, I don't know how many times <laughs> we fought, but six, seven, I don't know. But... 
I remember we're going pretty good, and I switched, and I threw a couple lefts, and we both lost our helmets. And at the end of the fight, we got twisted around, and you were behind me, and we both went down. I remember I went down. I hit my fucking head on the ice. I didn't know where the fuck I was. Tweety Bird, you were on my back. I, You can see it on the thing. You're, like, climbing on me. I think you're still trying to fucking get me. But I was fucking gone. And I remember getting up and I'm going to the penalty box. I'm going, holy fuck. It was like, a, it was all a blur after that. No, it's Nyland. Boy, they're just standing there trading punches. Brian can't get that right hand loose. Nyland's smart enough to tie that up. Ryan wants to be careful with the thumbs. But, you know, wow. I, I just you remember, remember every I, time going near you, it was fucking in front of the net. I'm getting cross-checked. Here it comes. I'd fucking do it back. And then we're fighting. Every, almost every fucking time we're on the ice, then. <laughs> it's like crazy. <laughs> yeah, we well, extreme dislike for one another. It was fucking yeah, incredible. Probably, yeah. But yeah. I think probably I wanted to bring this one up to you because this one is the one that... This is the one that cracks me up more than any. This isn't you, you and I fighting. It's when you guys brought in Mr. Friggin' Montreal. Oh, Norman Baron. Norman Baron. So here we are in front of the net. And Chris is behind him. And I'm sitting there because, you know, we're right in front of the net. And I'm right-handed. And I don't know what he is. But you see this, this guy in the papers. He's a ripped. A muscle head. He was a muscle head. He was and obviously and on the roids there. oh yeah no shit yeah and chris is sitting there and he's going make sure you grab his hand you can't fucking throw it his left and i'm like <laughs> no just shut the fuck up <laughs> seriously but you know he's giving it to me. but what he what the kid was just like like he was just wired and everybody yeah. was waiting right and when I already realized that I figured out he was a right-handed, so he's on the wrong side of me. Yeah. yeah and yeah. he fought me on the wrong side. Yeah. Like, he wasn't me, if I remember correctly. It was about four or five punches, and it was done. Yeah, no, but, you, when, you you had the edge on him, no, no question. At the start, you give it to him. You hit him like five times off the hop. It lasted. Oh, but my point was, is Chris is getting mm -hmm. like, Chris, he's coaching him. He's a steroid guy. <laughs> he's not going to have. I, I I had longer win than that dude. Did. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chris yeah. is giving him friggin'. And and the, the way I looked at it, Chris Chris did his. And this is a respect I always had for, you, even though I didn't like you. But yeah. I did respect people who did what we did. Right. Sorry, I got wasps flying around me. But uh, um, <laughs> when you when you were doing that, I was laughing inside of my head, like. <laughs> I was, I was acting mad, but I'm, laugh, I'm sitting inside of my head and going, Chris, what the fuck are you? <laughs> if he doesn't know what he's supposed to do, well, then he's done already. I, honestly, I didn't think he did. Like, I knew he had <laughs> muscles, but um, I didn't know how he could fight or anything like that because I never, I never saw him in camp or none of that stuff. All of a sudden, they brought him in. I, I was like, who the fuck? Yep, there's that. Here goes. They, no, that's okay. <laughs> I gotta um, kill this fucking thing in a that's, minute. That's Theo Flory coming after you, <laughs> <laughs> like a little fucking bug. Uh, um, so no, but you, but you look back at those times and stuff like that, and any guy that could fight to me and, and did it over and over and over, that's the part you, you respect it. Yeah, like um, like Bob Bob Probert, like you know, like Bob destroyed me out. Ten yeah. times he destroyed me eight times, right? Um, but we had our own little battles, him and I. Like, a lot different than you and I. Like, Chris and I were totally, we would probably go to a bar and kill each other. Yeah, we, <laughs> like, we would like, definitely. We would, it wouldn't stop at the rick back then. Thank go God. The Thank God Thank we didn't God. see each other in a bar. We actually did, Sir Winston's. Oh, Winnie's, did we? I forget yeah, we that. Each other. You were at the end of the bar. I was at the front of the bar, and I'm like, the "Oh, fuck this is." What were you doing game. there, night before a game? <laughs> it was the night. It was oh yeah. It was after. The game. After okay. After. I don't know what you were doing there. No, you lived there, so. But 
No, I, I, I mean, funny. when it comes down to it, like, I found most of the tough guys, especially yeah. now I'm getting older and I've reached, I've talked to a few now. We're, yeah. We've grown up. Uh, like, it's, oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's it, we're, we're not fucking spring chickens anymore. No. But it was no. fun. Like, oh, they're, yeah, it they're was. fun stories to talk about now. Yeah. Because I still talk about Chris. You went, you played against my nephews, by the way, a few years ago when they came to Alberta. Okay, uh, with the alumni. Yeah. Alumni, Darren. That's funny. Darren went up to six foot seven. Yeah. Okay. And I guess you uh, you gave him a rub out, and I and I was sitting there. And I said, "Why didn't you just kick the fuck, fuck out?" Why of didn't me? you come and say <laughs> hi to me, you prick? I wasn't there. Oh, you were. Oh, oh, you no, I was gonna I say, "Why didn't you come and say hi?" Sure. Um, if I was there, I would have stopped. Calling all hockey lovers. Upgrade your podcast experience by becoming an enforcer. Gain access to the greatest hockey doc ever, The Last Gladiators. And don't settle for ordinary. Join the Fight Club over on Patreon today. Yeah, so the Islander time, you're there for a year. Um, played a full season, basically. Uh, then you uh, in next year, Springfield, and back up with the Isles. Then you come home to Toronto, where you're born. You play two, well, original six team in Boston. You go to the Isles, then you go to Toronto. What was it like coming to Toronto, and did you enjoy your time there? Was it, how was that? Toronto was really, uh, first of all, when you, when you uh, the first time I ever saw Maple Leaf Carts, when I watched it, you know, like, my favorite rinks when I was a kid was I, my first one, like, everyone in Boston, don't be offended. Yeah. But Montreal Forum, I thought, was the coolest building. Yeah. Like, it did. It was of a kid. Like, that was such a cool building, right? And, yeah. and Mary Robinson and I, we actually uh, met up in Sarasota, Florida. He was oh, out back in the cool. day doing polls. And, and Larry and I went and had a couple of drinks anyway. But Great guy. Um, yeah, he's a super guy. And then, um, so Toronto was... In, like you know what Montreal was like. I, I don't know who's worse with the, the press. Um, oh yeah, they can, yeah, yeah. They can eat you alive. Yeah. And, and not a guy like me. They don't eat guys like me. I mean, I'm a, I'm just a fighter. Yeah. But man, did they? It was a tough city to play in. Uh, the, the building was not what I thought it was on TV. <laughs> it, it was a, a real bar. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, like I like Boston Garden and people like over Toronto. Oh yeah. Totally. Yeah, it had, well, like, it had the balcony. It had that character, like yeah. such character, right? And they'd sit there and they'd go, well, you know, like in Boston, you know, like, Colonel, you're going to love playing here, small rink, blah, 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 right? I actually like playing in the bigger rinks yeah. than the, the small ones. But Boston Garden was that one where you could use, I mean, like, I, I love to shit. But Toronto, you know, I don't think you could go to any place and sit there. And uh, being 100% honest, I don't think there was more than two players my whole time and all the teams I played with, there was maybe two players that I couldn't stand. Like, the, the fraternity is an amazing thing. And when you get to know these guys that you played against, too, you think yeah. they're such assholes, but they're just doing their job. But when yeah. I was 20, 21, 22, 23, yeah, I, mean, I, I still hated them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? right. But yeah, I mean, it, it, I'm not just it's water under the bridge. Oh, I'm playing for the Islanders, and uh, I don't yeah. like you killings. Like, yeah. you meet Clark Gillies, one of the nicest freaking guys you'll ever meet in your life, right? Yeah. yeah. But it's the switch that goes on and off for all of us, right? Oh. And uh, so Toronto was, uh, we were, uh, the only thing is, I uh, loved him to death, was uh, I was roommate with Boris Solvay for quite a while. Oh. And, uh, so sad. Yeah, it really is. And uh, boy, he was a, an amazing guy to be around. Um, of course, Wendell Clark. In my opinion, Wendell Clark, for a guy who can score his size, I'd put him in the top five middleweights, hands down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wendell just had a just a different way he about him. He was a tough but, kid. Yeah. You know, Brad Marsh was a guy that I really liked in Toronto. But to answer the question, um, I enjoyed it. Hard place to play out. We were in the playoffs in one year, and we got beat 7-1 at home, and First time I'd ever seen people were going out and buying jerseys and throwing them up the ice on us. And yeah. I'm like, I was, you know, I was, you know, I was disappointed in that. But, you know, we sucked. You know, we, we just, <clears throat> we just didn't pull it together. Um, Ally Afraidy was uh, my roommate too for a while. Alfie yeah. was, he's, a, he's, 
He's a story. You should write a book yeah, about him. He's awesome. I love well, Al. See, I, like, played some, I played some old timer with him. He's a lot of, a lot of fun. Yeah, Alfie used to be, uh, well, I, I got tons on him, but Alfie yeah. used to say, Alfie, because he's big Harley Davidson guy, right? Yeah. But Alfie, uh, he'd sit there and be like, Colonel, come to Detroit. Because so, well, uh -huh. by the way, why do you got two bikes? Well, I need someone to ride with when I get what I bring. But these are like <laughs> back in the day, these are $25,000 <laughs> Harley yeah. Davidson's redone. They're in a magazine. <laughs> and Al doesn't give a shit. He's just like, let's go. Like, he's a good person. Um, yeah, you know what? It was a harder place than I thought, um, because we weren't very good, but we had a lot of like we had a lot of was some like Tommy Fergus was there. Yeah, Fergie. Yeah, Fergie old and Boston Tommy was, Rowan. Yeah, and uh, Brad Marsh was a blast. Like Brad Marsh, class act. Um, I have to go back and look at Kenny Reggae. Uh, yeah. Kenny Reggae was there. He was intense, but yeah, Toronto was a. Uh, um, it wore because again now I had that big fighting season. Yeah. So three hundred one pins, yeah. I guess, a big fighting season. But <laughs> yeah. that that's ended up being um, your last um, year there. Well, no, you came back the next year, and they you had you in um, Newmarket, and then you end up in Rochester, and then what happened Hopefully. there in ninety ninety one? Well, go. They, you end up uh, getting. You end up getting traded? Yeah. Um, I actually thought, well, I went to Washington, too. So the Washington one's probably the funniest story of all for me personally. But So you go to Wash. That was all right. So you get Buffalo, out of, right? You went to Buffalo, and then, then wash. you go to Wash in 93, 94. What happens yeah. there? And why well, is it so funny? So I go, I go to Wash, and well, I think it was funny, right? Because I sent this to David Poyle, right? So... So anyway, the Washington camp goes really well. Um, Barry Trotz was our coach in Portland. We had won yeah. the Colt Cup that, that year, I think, too. But anyway, yeah. um, so we go to, I go to camp, and we're in Ottawa, uh, the exhibition. Um, I'm not playing in the game, but um, so we know this is it. Final day, so Chris Jensen and my, myself are on the ice with all, about five, six other guys, and all of a sudden, you're starting to hear your names. And Jenner and I are the same age, and Jenner was the leading scorer in training camp, so it was kind of a, he, he hears his name, and he's got to skate off the ice and go see David, and blah, blah, blah. Well, he's, he's just pissed. So I just keep skating around, and the next guy goes, and the next guy goes, and this hit the whoops. And now I'm basically <laughs> shitting myself. <laughs> I'm like, when the, like, I, honest to God, I said this. Well, if you're going to do it, just fucking do it. I'm around, I've been around a long time. I'm expecting to go to Portland. Yeah. Like, so, anyway, they finally called me, and uh, David wasn't there. He was the assistant GM was doing it, but whatever. So he goes, uh, Mr. Poyle would like to see you when you get back to watch the Piney Orchard. And I'm like, what, you can't fucking tell me now? I got to go see the GM and talk to him now? I'm serious. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. Like, no, I gotta sleep. I don't sleep all night. So yeah. I go in there and me and Mr. Lyon, hi, Mr. Poyle, and I finally said, I had enough. <laughs> I just said, listen, I've really enjoyed my child self here. I thought I had a great camp. Um, I've been around a long time. So, Mr. Poyle, with all respect, if you're sending me down, you could have done it yesterday. And he looks at me and he goes, no, we were just gonna offer you a contract, Brian, and play me at a show. <laughs> and you know, like my dad used to make you laugh again. My dad used to say, Brian, you can talk a starving dog off a meat truck. Well, <laughs> yeah. they all right. But I go in and they offer it to me. Uh, uh, they send me down and then I get, well, you like this. Uh, remember uh, mm -hmm. kid Mark Major? Is Mark that Major, I know the name. But yeah, he played in Providence. Okay. Anyway, so I, I went down the American League and. You were in Portland a couple of years, close to Boston yeah. again. Yeah, Did you find yourself actually, going down to Boston at all when you were in uh, Portland? No, I've been in Portland no. for years. Yeah. Uh, I've been in Boston a couple of times. Yeah. But, uh, so it's October 31st, right? And the 30th, I think it was, Mark Major decides he's going to make a name for itself. 51 penalty minutes each. One oh. fight. What he the hell did you do? Old school. He <laughs> jumped in the box in Providence to fight Giga. Oh. Uh. <laughs> oh, yeah! You know, I saw him years later, and he's, he's 
you know what? He's just another guy I thought was a friggin' are you out of your friggin' mind, dude? Yeah. Like I just pummeled you. So uh-huh. now you're at the box that's gonna happen. Because <laughs> now he really pissed me off. Like now the blood went way up. And I I'm kinda done with it. But anyway, next two days later I'm up in Washington. And so I went up to Washington. I got injured unfortunately and ended up. Ninety three, ninety four you were there, right? And then yeah. Um, you finished out Portland two years, 94, 95, 95, 96. And then uh, you end up with the K-Wings, the Philadelphia Phantoms, Monroe Markinsons, and then the Utah Grizzlies. And then Vegas. also Vegas. you end up in Vegas. Now, I got to ask you, Tommy was up. Stumpy there when you yeah. were in Vegas? Oh, no, That's what... he wasn't there. Um, actually, he no, wasn't Stumpy... there yet. No. No, okay, um, that's what... All and right. I saw Stumpy a couple of years ago, which is always okay. Stumpy. I don't get to see him. He's in Vegas. And, yeah. But anyway, like, uh, yeah, the Vegas thing was funny because we had... You know, I, I was done in hockey. I was playing in this WPH well league. Had a blast. It was fun, Monroe. We get beat out, and we go on a one-week bench. Then Bob Strum calls me up. I'm just with Strummer. Up. Strummer. Strummer calls me up and says that. Uh, Colonel, we'd like you to come to Vegas. Well, I'm just hug. Like, it's you're with the boys. It's a yeah. week long in Monroe, Louisiana. People wouldn't know this, but that's a freaking blast, right? Having a lot of fun. I guess. So, anyway, um, I said, sure. Well, I mean, I got on the plane and half cut. And <laughs> Clint Millard, Chuck, and Rod Buskis go, well, Colonel, how much, can you, how much can you play? about five minutes if we're lucky enough <laughs> I said I've drank and I've smoked enough cigarettes the last friggin five years <laughs> and next first game practice one next game 23 minutes I, my, my face was like a, a red light like so you were like it's time it's time to go did that kind no, of you, you, no I ended up playing playing the playoffs had a really good time working with younger players and that's kind of the transition that I never saw coming so yeah. then I went into uh, like, I was working with the younger guys. And even when I was in Kalamazoo, uh, Ken Hitchcock and I were talking. Uh, can't remember. He was a Russian defenseman. He was my partner. I ended up working and helping him out. And then off to Vegas and on and on. But then coaching became kind of a second nature. To, I wanted to help players and uh, see how I would do, Alfred. Oh. Nope. You know, yeah, yeah. So, so you coach for a while. You coached there. You coached Brooks Bandits, Alberta Junior Hockey League, and Lloyd Minister. Matter of fact, is that where I saw your uh, your cousin in Lloyd Minister? Might have been in Lloyd. Yeah, yeah. we played up there because I remember we played up there. Probably uh, was in Lloyd. Yeah, for sure. So you coached a few years, and and what are you doing now? You are still in the uh, coaching game? Yeah, no, no, none of that. So I ended up coaching 17 years. So I coached in the East Coast Hockey League. Yeah. And was I in the league that year? We coached yeah. against each other. No, Chesapeake, because you were in Jacksonville. I was in but Jacksonville. We did, no. Yeah, well, I was in the league that year, 98, 99. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. That was a, that but was I don't think we special. ever played yet. No. No, that's right, too. No, we didn't, yeah. but... Well, our owner, David Berkman, owned three teams, Pensacola, Birmingham, and Jacksonville, right? Yeah. So when I was coaching, you had to laugh your ass off the fact that I had two guys come from Europe, strippers, and they're trying <laughs> out for the team. And I'm like, well, who recruited these guys? Like, oh, my God. So I, I talked to Mr. Berkman after we went 313-1, and one, and I think I, uh, I said, you know what? He's, he says, you got five games. You got to win four out of five or you're fired. And we were three thirteen and one. So I said, I got a week off. Do I have the right to make trades without going through our head guy who gave me the job? And he says, absolutely. So I ended up making the, all these trades. I made 61 trades that year. Um, that is like a stupid record. But we ended up being like 42 and something. Like we had a winning season or 38 and whatever it was. But that's how that all went and then uh, off to junior now I'm, uh, Andrew Maloney and Rolly Thompson the Maloney Thompson agency out of uh, yeah. uh, Wealth Ontario so yeah. uh, my really good friend Dean Zaherchuk put me on to Andrew and uh, that was like seven years ago yeah. so now I'm working with anywhere, anywhere from 13 year olds all the way up to our pro guys yeah that's cool, oh, cool. good cool. feel 
Uh, yeah, you've heard. stayed in Jackson. the game and you've made a career for yourself out of it. It's funny. We did. I was in the league the same year as you, but we didn't play against Jacksonville that year. I remember. I'm like, well, because I, I, when I think back, I said, geez, too bad we didn't play Jacksonville because fucking me and you could have been the fucking star <laughs> of the game going at well, each other at center ice. Let's go, motherfucker. <laughs> I think he's got it a couple, Chris, with coaches. Oh. I, in one in one game, I threatened the coach. Um, I did too. <laughs> yeah, I said, uh, just yelled over to his bench. I said, uh, you know, I know, I remember you as a player. I'm going to leave the name. Yeah. I remember you as a player, and I go, you know what? You were a fucking pussy when you played back then, and you're still a fucking <laughs> pussy with big, tough guys around you. And I looked at his team, and I go, He's a chicken shit. You guys are playing with a fucking pussy. Like, I swear to God. I said, I'll tell you what we do. Honest to God. We'll go out to the school playground out back by the monkey bars. I'm going to kick the fuck out of you. And then we can play. And then we can come on the ice and let the players play, right? So it, it was... I did that about three times. I've calmed down considerably the last 10 years. I did that in the in the East Coast League. Uh, coach and the assistant coach were walking by the bench, but the head coach had sent one of his idiots out to do something, and the guy never had a fight in his life, and he started shit, and he was coming by, and some of my guys were on the bench. Some were still skating around, and he'd come by. I said, you mother... Man. Oh, I, what, the shit I said to him... And I said, I, it, Ben, he scurried into the bench. And then the next time, the next period, he walked through the stands to get the bench. He didn't come by in front of the bench. My, the boys were loving it. My players were just loving it. They had knuckles, like a right. Well, I, oh, it was funny. I, I'll leave funny you, shit. Like, like this last one I got, because you remember uh, uh, Steve McIntyre? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big six foot six. Room yeah, and tough kid. Like so, if you look on my team lineup in Columbus Cottonmouths in the East Coast Hockey League, yeah. So and I can't I can't remember where we were going, but their coach was pulling this shed right, and I had the toughest, probably toughest five guys in the league, right? And anyway, they they were such a joy to coach. What was the name of that team <laughs> like, again? Columbus Cottonmouths. Oh, oh Cottonmouths. Okay. Yeah. So you, you'd recognize some of those. There's some heavyweights on that team. So this, this team is beating us 3 nothing or 4 nothing in the first 5, 10 minutes, whatever it is, right? And then their coach decides to send a message by sending up the tough guy, and he kicks the shit out of one of our guys that's like that tough. And I look at him, and I go, like, can you have to kidding me? And Stephen McIntyre goes, Coach, let me be the first. Then I go, want to do it? I yelled at the coach, <laughs> you want this? It's going to happen now. Out goes Mac. Oh, I can still hear the punches hitting this guy's face. Like, it was brutal. Roman Andrew looks at me. Colonel, I'm next. Wilson blows. Room kicks the shit out of another guy. Third guy goes out. Fourth guy goes out. Fifth guy, they cancel the period with one minute left. Straighten things out. But the funny thing was, is you should have seen him after, after the game. I don't know what happened, it's, but it, they became so close to family after that. We went on a 17-3 at one round. Wow. Wow. Spooked so the whole crazy. league, I think, Tim, right? Yeah, Must have right. spooked the whole team. <laughs> yeah. And the league. Um, so, oh, Colonel, um, yeah. so in, in the agent business now, doing some work there, when you look at the NHL today, what do you think of the game and, and, and fighting in the game? What do you think of the game? Well, I'm always going to be an advocate of, I think fighting still belongs in the game. I, I, you know, it's, I use this analogy of how crazy society we have, and I'm not getting into this big stuff, but you know what? You yeah. go into the U.S. and you look at this friggin' UFC and all this fighting. It's a multi-million. Two, two, yeah. two people don't even know each other. Get into a ring and kick the living shit out of each other. And it's a multi-billion dollar people. Everybody it's, loves it. Everyone yeah. loves it. You go into a game in Edmonton, Calgary, and it's, hey, don't get me wrong. They're faster. They're bigger. They're stronger. Even the smaller players are stronger, faster. The skill levels are way better. I get it. I get it. But you got to sit there, and I'm watching a game like this going, oh, my God. Like, I don't go to games in the, in the, during the season anymore. Yeah, unless, yeah. unless I'm watching that players, right? 
And then all of a sudden the fight breaks out. Don't watch the fight. Watch the crowd because everyone is so excited. Yeah. Like they're yeah. into it. But yeah. yet we're a barbaric sport. Yeah. Like we're, we're, we're horrible human beings. But yet <laughs> UFC sits there. Like you go to a NASCAR, maybe a bad enough. You go to a NASCAR race, bump drafting at 100, 190 miles an hour. You go into a wall and crash. I'm pretty sure I'd rather get hit with a punch. Yeah, me too. <laughs> like a 100 mile an hour fastball at your head. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I want to get hit with the punch in that 100 mile an hour fastball. Pretty sure. Yet we're crazy. So the, the subject, topic, I get heated about it. I don't think it has to be like hard day. Yeah. But I think it tamed down quite a bit. Like yeah. I would say like mid 80s, 86, yeah. 7. Yeah, yeah. Um, where the young players today have no respect for anybody. Like that's just society right now. They have no respect for anybody. And a kid will see a guy turn, and we can get into all this stuff. I'm around hockey all the time. Instead of the kid taking, you know, the kid saying, oh, his, his numbers are turned, right? The kid still runs him, right? Well, in our day, like if you touch Ray Bork, yeah. like my buddy, like my, a good friend of mine, Lou Francis. Or Ken. Rick Middleton, or, or Rick, Rick Middleton. Middleton. <laughs> yeah. That's a great example. <laughs> but do you know that? And, and we all did that. And that would stop. I'm not saying we have to go back to 70s and 80s hockey, but no. I'm saying, you know, you can find a kid $25,000, $50,000. Well, what the hell is that? Doing? But you yeah. send a message, and I'm sorry, people think it's old school. Mm. You throw a punch, and you hit a kid that just ran Rick Middleton. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying it's you, just saying it was somebody yeah. else, because you would come back over and over and over, right? Yeah. Say it was somebody else, right? That kid has probably learned his lesson. He's probably learned it. So there's, you can find all day long, but the only thing I will, that I do love, I, I love the speed and the quickness and the skill level, but we're dying, like Chris, we're as, as agents. If we find a player that has the edge and skill, yeah. doesn't mind going to the dirty areas and doesn't mind mixing it up, not fighting, not fighting. Yeah, yeah, nope. but playing hard. Yeah, we're, we're, we're keeping them. Yeah. Like we're, those are the playoff players that we yeah. want. Like those yeah. are the kids we want. Like we got Dobson, who's with the Island, right? And Dobber's a hell of a, you know, great defenseman and everything. And Paul Boudelier has done an amazing job the last four years because yeah. Paul's with us too, right? He's done an amazing job with him. But even Dobber knows too. Like you know, his game has improved immensely, and and I hope he gets paid. Yeah. You know, I don't know where he is on it right now, but you know. He's a guy that's changed his game a little bit and got a little more. He's never going to be that defenseman that's going to be like I was, nor should he be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> be, be you get a hundred thousand instead of eleven million, maybe, but whatever. Well, but, it's funny. Hey, listen, there's guys that play hockey, and then there's hockey players. Yes, and I yep. think hey, Marty St. Louis said that best when he talked about guys here. He said, "There's guys, certain guys, they play hockey." And then there's hockey players. He's a hockey player. And it's true. You know, um, guys guys have that passion for the game, love the game. The game has changed somewhat. So the object is still the same. But, boy, you know, I miss the rivalries. And we talk about it, right? Back in the day, we'd play four exhibition games, then eight times during the season, and then the playoffs. I mean, by the time you get the playoffs, you know, you hate each other. You hate, you know, we fucking hated each other, Brian. You know, oh, like, you yeah. really hated each other. I, I think that is, now that I'm older, uh, and even as I got into my 30s, a lot of the beginning was under, was emotion. Yeah. You know, just yeah, the yeah. emotion you had, and, and trying to control your emotion that you're not being stupid. Yeah. But yet, it was all emotion, and those rivalries you're talking about, well, now that I, when I get into my 30s, I, I look back at it, and wow, there were some epic nights. No, it was crazy. I mean, it was hard. Like if anyone was to say to me, and I thought the Stanley Cup playoffs were amazing this year, there was yeah. a lot of good battles going on, the board yeah. battles, the net battles. You know, guys were actually allowed to cross check again and all yeah. this stuff. But people, I got to tell you, it was nothing like back in our day. <laughs> no. I mean, yeah. you left the rake and, and we'll, none of us will ever say it, but you kind of wondered how we played the next game yeah. because you were beat up. But when you won, the feeling was just like, yeah, you didn't the, feel it. 
And I feel it today, control. though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I do, right? too. Uh, but you, well. know, you don't see, like, you see the Edmonton Calgary series now. You know, that's our big thing. Like, there was Boston, Montreal, Edmonton Calgary. That used to be a real good one until about 10 years ago. Yeah. It's not that anymore. But, yeah, you don't see it. And it, it. Never is going, it's never going to be, but, you know, long answer to you. I think that it has, I think it's part of the game. And I uh-huh. think that it would it would change a lot of the injuries that are happening on the ice today if people were held accountable. And I'm not trying to say hurt somebody. I mean, you get in a fight, it could happen. It happened to me and that, but I bounce back. And every one of us pretty well do. You know, yeah. like it, you, you know, I talked to Marty McSorley a couple of years ago. I had him at an event of ours, right? And, yeah. and we laugh at some of the stuff, right? Because Marty was a big... Yeah. You know, but you know, you yeah. sit there. We all say the same thing. What, what the fans really like him back? Yeah. Hell yeah, what? Yeah, I think it's, they would too. And that rivalry, like you remember walking in. I appreciate sure you walk into Montreal when we played in the playoffs. You walk yeah. into the forum where you walk into the gardens. Yeah. You could feel the tension. Yeah, even True before that. you get to the ice. Nothing you like know it. You it's gonna yeah. be a war. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you think. I don't know if they feel it's a war. Yeah. And the teams that win the Stanley Cup to me today, they're more battle ready. Yeah. They, are, you know, they're going. They're going where they're gonna go, and and they well, win the battle. Florida, battles. right? You look at yeah. that team that are battling a bunch. You know, you definitely need it. There's no question about it. Brian, the Colonel, Curran, uh, I never thought we'd be doing this one day, but we finally did. I, I want to tell you, I appreciate you coming on so much. Uh, it was really nice to get to know you other than saying, fuck you, fuck you, let's go. Um, and you're a good guy. I really, uh, hockey guys are good guys. We, we can hate each other when we're out there on the ice, and I get it, but, you know, most of the guys who oppose each other and have issues on the ice with one another, when they meet each other, it's always the same. There's a respect there. I appreciate there. you having me. And, have, yeah. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Uh, hey. I think know the other side of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. You can say fuck me when it's done. <laughs> I fucking hate that turtle as soon as you get off. <laughs>